again. Welcome to another edition of Arts and Ideas. I'm Sue Swinand, and I'm delighted to have a uh, very special guy with me today, Mr. Barrett Morgan, who has been a, a collector and a figure in the art community in Worcester for as long as I can remember. And uh, thanks so much for joining us, Barry. Well, thank you very much for I, asking I'm beginning me to, to join you. I'm beginning to find out more and more about this man, whom I knew only a little bit from seeing him everywhere. But uh, the funny thing is, in all the years we've been doing the show now, I have never before had a collector, a real collector, <laughs> as my guest. And uh, I'm realizing how important a collector is to the health of the art community. And all the kinds of things you do to support the community in ways that go under the radar, you know, like uh, supporting exhibitions and lending work to shows and uh, opening the doors at the Worcester Art Museum. Uh, I <laughs> saw that in the paper. Uh, so he's really made a wonderful contribution to the city of Worcester, and uh, I thank you for all of that. Well, I think you're very flattering. Indeed. <laughs> and you're very humble. Um, anyway, I wanted to know more about you, and that's the fun part of this job. So if you could tell our audience a little bit about your background, that would be fun. Well, I grew up in Worcester, huh? on West Street. A native son. When West Street was a, you know, a neighborhood. And uh, well, I went away to school, and I came back. Uh, and uh, I worked in, in the Middle East, and uh, I worked in England. And How long were you in the Middle East? I was in the Middle East for about three and a half, four years. And, uh, was that something that uh, influenced your collecting of uh, Middle Eastern art? Well, yeah, because I looked at a lot of it, and there were a lot of antique shops with uh, original pieces and other kind of pieces. Mm -hmm. And there was a very active industry in Iran of copying uh, Persian miniatures and ceramics. And uh, it, 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 you developed an eye after a while so that you could tell which was which. <laughs> and, when yeah. did you first realize that you had an interest in art? Or like, did you collect well, things as a kid? Did you have an aha moment when you said, hey, I really like looking at fine things? And, Oh, it just I've just always been interested in art, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, you know, and it sort of grew from there. And uh, Did you know, you say you're a collector, but in so many cases, I think you're just an amasser of things. <laughs> you know. Did your parents have a big influence on you having uh, developing a sense for the arts? Well, yes and no. And uh, they were, you know, they were avid travelers, so we traveled a lot, and so we were exposed to a lot of different uh, of, uh, cultures. Mm -hmm. you know? so, mm -hmm. That's my father was, you know, particularly interested in the Maya, so uh, you know, there were some Maya things floating around the house, and. and uh, That's one of the I, interesting things is that your collection is so diverse. It's, uh, what are some of the other things that you've collected, like areas of uh, collecting? I know you collect the ceramics, of course, but. Well, the two-dimensional art, you know, just to cover the walls. And of course, ceramics and, uh, and Persian miniatures. I have you know, some Persian miniatures that, that are quite interesting. And Persian, Persian books. Mm -hmm. And of course, your co-partner and collector and wife, Maru, yes. she is Persian, is she not? Yes. So uh, I'm sure she's had a lot of input in those uh, oh, uh, yes. looking certainly. and the fun of sharing oh, that certainly. with her. Oh, yeah. certainly, yeah. 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 Oh, it was such a delight to see some of the work she, in your home. Well, I'm glad that you came. <laughs> I'd love to show it off. I had no idea the yeah. depth of his collection. Well, I wouldn't say the depth is so great, but uh, you know, it is diverse. And it is fine quality. 
Uh, it, one thing that struck me, which was funny, is I saw a quote where you said, um, when you went into the museum as a little boy, so and went through the bronze doors, it was like this magical moment of walking into the Worcester well, Art think, Museum in the Renaissance Court. Yeah, I think the whole thing with walking into that entrance of the Art Museum, you suddenly were in this wonderful Renaissance hall with a, a tremendous mosaic which is full of action for kids, yes. you know, the hunting mosaic. And, it, and uh, it's, just, it's just sort of awe-inspiring when you, you walk in you know, a, a rather nondescript front of a building. Yes, and, and uh, all of a sudden you're transported. The impact is tremendous. If you go in the, the, the back, the interest that they're using so much now, it's like walking in the back door of a factory. Uh -huh. And uh, it wasn't meant to be that way, but that's the way they, it turned out to be. Yeah, and Barry was, uh, to a large degree, responsible for getting that Salisbury door entrance open. So we thank you for that. Speaking yeah. of factories, now your career was in manufacturing, I understand. Oh, yeah, yeah, making things. What did you make particularly? Well, in the Middle East, uh, uh, I didn't make things. I I drilled water wells and looked, searched for water, oh. and uh, found incredible amounts, which for which the Iranians were very thankful. That uh, here in this country, I I decided I I wanted a job making things, and I just literally went out and uh, knocked on doors, and I ended up, ended up working for the. David Clark Company, it's a, you know, as you know, as their space programs, so it's making suits for that and, and making hearing protectors, kind of interesting. So uh, very high career tech. Career working, yeah. working uh, at that company. Wow. Yeah. Is there something about ceramics that you could express why it appeals to you? Or? Well, I, I, think that, I think the diversity of the the medium, if you take a lump of clay, it can you know it can turn into anything. It can turn into a tile. It can turn into a pot. And, you know, it's just it's amazing how how clay is uh, is magic. Magic. How it's used so many different ways. You know, from a, a Adobe you know Adobe mud brick. Uh, bricks uh, at, uh, to uh, very very fine pieces like that piece in the in the uh, on the screen there. Yeah, or the Chinese porcelains. You know, sure. the, every yeah. single culture has. It's been a mark of their cultural development when they've learned to use clay. Right, and and, and of course everybody learned to use it very early too. Yeah, very ancient yeah. medium. Ah, uh, wow. And uh, so you collect the Persian miniatures, the clay, and I, maybe we should start showing the audience some of the pieces so why they, not? they're probably yeah. dying saying, stop talking, why, why show not? us these pieces. Yeah. So uh, what, it, what are we looking at here? This was, was a vase and uh, it collapsed. And because the guy th threw it too thinly along the sides. And so instead of scrapping it, he, he just pushed down the middle with his two fingers and turned it into a kind of an ornate looking still a vase. And I loved the, the, the way he glazed it, that, oh, that yeah. bubbly white texture. And such was, I think it's quite interesting and I haven't seen it like that anywhere else. It, it has a wonderfully organic, rough surface, like some kind of a yeah, reptile a, or something. Right. But yeah. yet it's like a fortune cookie. You know? yes. But we we're talking before about the, uh, the, the sensitivity to materials when you're a craftsperson and how just learning to know how wet is too wet and how dry is too dry. And, and then also the idea of going with what comes along, being able to take sure. surprise yeah. and sure. work with them. Like this guy was 
managed to collect himself again and, and uh, say, turn hey. out something that was, you know, it's just visually stimulating. And, and better shape. than but, some straightforward bowl might be. You know, yeah, it's more but, exciting. But Warren McKenzie is, you know, was this, uh, in his 80s, uh, the dean of uh, American potters. And, uh, and that's he, a huge he, piece, isn't it? He, he, he makes these beautiful platters. That's an 18-inch platter. And then he just sort of magically with his brush paints on the on the, uh, the the glaze on the surface and and that's and that it is is done it's like a chinese brush it's master sort of very kind of original yeah one beautiful gesture just, and the line yeah, just yeah. follows the intention it's beautiful and how about this piece what a gorgeous oh how yeah. unusual. Yeah, it's unusual because of the size. And the fellow th threw this tremendous big pot and then managed to bring it in together and then up to the fluted, fluted neck. And that's what's what that. How does one throw a little teeny tiny neck up. like that? This, it takes a lot of, a lot of skill to. Not a very long finger. Like that, huh? <laughs> it's not a very long finger. <laughs> stunning, stunning yeah. piece. You know, the other thing about all these pieces is there's every one is different. You know, sure. they're yeah. so diverse. Did you want to say anything about the uh, bull? I'll well, just, that's, uh, Amlash was an old, old Iranian uh, pre-Muslim culture, and they did some ceramics this is about what 4,000 years ago and you look how they were you know creating a very modern looking stylized bull at, in that day and age yeah and uh, you know it's a, I don't tell most people that but uh, that's a very well done fake <laughs> You could have fooled me. <laughs> could have fooled Picasso, too. <laughs> oh, this one is funny. Tell us about this one. Well, this is just a, just a small piece. It's, what, three and a half inches high. And uh, I just like the shape and the color of it. And when you look at it, it, uh, you know, it, it doesn't move, but it, uh, I don't know, how, how do you say it? Uh, it looks different when you look at it from different oh definitely from different uh, definitely uh, viewpoint well to my eye or to my thinking about it it's extremely um, kind of intellectual because it makes you play with the idea of space yeah, and yeah. Uh, the whole thing of perspective is you know he's really fooling around with this I'll show the second slide. Yeah. And see, that's the same see, piece. See how thin and it is. And it is yeah. totally, it's almost two-dimensional. Yeah. <laughs> and yet it, he gives you this it, little joke because in this perspective you see it as it looks quite, a bowl quite, thrown looks in the round. quite deep, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. You know, it's kind like of funny in that way. it could be four or five way. inches across. So it's kind of a, a, a joke <laughs> about, uh, you know, looking and how we see yeah. things. And uh, how about this gigantic guy? This is done by a fellow named Ormond, who does big, big pieces. And uh, you, know, you, can, you can guess by the table how big it is. Yeah. And uh, I just, I like the shape and the form. And if you look carefully at the top, you can see how he finished off the top with a little swirl and where he yeah. brought it together. I think that's the elegance of the, the aesthetic yeah, okay. of that big, yeah. bold, bulbous thing. And then that delicate, it's little, fine, nice elegant opening. Finished to it, to it. A little surprise <laughs> slit in the top. One, and this is like, you, you told me this was like Ichabod Crane galloping. Well, this was, yeah, this was a, a sculpture. Uh, it was done by a guy named Tex Shewitz, who for years and years and years ago, I must have bought that when I was a teenager. Wow. And uh, it was going to be a cowboy 
riding on a horse and he left the cowboy that evening sitting straight up on the horse and during the night the clay let the cowboy slope down on the neck of the horse and uh, he modified the horse and, uh, and decided that really was Ichabod Crane. But isn't it After wonderful? After the headless horseman and if you look at it up close the, the horse's eyes are half out of his head as are his eyes half out of his head in sheer terror. And I just love the, the movement. It's yeah. A, there's wonderful movement. And if he were piece. sitting up straight, it would stop dead. Oh, yeah, Whereas yeah. being punched and down and are, diving yeah, forward. These guys are going hell bent for leather. And get away from the headless, headless horseman. And again, that came from sort of an accident of the clay that yeah. contributed. The, <laughs> right. the material yeah. contributes and like, makes helps you sure. make a statement. Like the, the, the first piece we looked at was, would have been a, a, a nondescript kind of vase, but that was an interesting sort of art form. Yeah, everybody and his uncle makes the perfect yeah. circle, and that was totally new. How about these, this? You know, these are a very geometrical piece, you know, and uh, there's wonderful texture, wonderful feel to the it. The surface is very pebbly, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yes. It reminds me of the Russian constructivists, you know, the early 20th century uh, cubist before with a cubism. It's a definitely a yeah. pure sculpture, not a, you know, it's a ceramic sculpture. Well, you know, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's very dynamic if you look at it. It's got mm -hmm. lots of movement. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, I just uh, I sort of enjoy looking at it, and uh, I have even a place where I look at it uh, you know, five or ten times a day. <laughs> that must be a wonderful thing to uh, live with these objects. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you've had uh, a whole lifetime of looking at them and appreciating them in different lights and different sure. relationships. And this one gets seen very regularly. One of some, the of the, some of the others, you know, are don't. You probably have a lot tucked away. Very often. <laughs> One of the things I enjoyed about seeing the pieces in your home is the way you've set pieces that have dialogues and relationships of color and scale and texture and it, it, it lovingly installed. I think. Uh, well, thank you very much because it isn't purposely done. It's just. It just happens that way. Well, I think you know? it might be your instinct, you know, your yeah. your eye and. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. How about this guy? Well, this was done by a woman that here at the Worcester Center for Crafts years and years ago, and uh, she made this made this bowl, and uh, it's not very usable as a bowl, but. Uh, put all these little circles in and uh, you know, time consuming piece of work and then put these the sort of white flowers on top and it's a very sort of interesting piece and, and uh, the time that went into creating that yes you know it's, it's something that, uh, that you really have to admire her for the for the it work she did is there an opening in that as a bowl or a vessel, or is it a closed form at this point? It's basically a closed form. I, I, lo I think that surface is so astounding. <laughs> it looks <laughs> almost <laughs> like needlework or uh, some kind of fungus growing in the forest. Or, you know, it, it's just, it's extremely organic. It's just amazing and totally original and surprising for me. Well, yeah, I've yeah, never seen it's anything it's, like it. Yeah, it's just something you notice. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going the wrong way. Ooh, what's this one? And that's just a, somebody, a, a guy that was a Japanese guy, lives here in, in, in Massachusetts, and this has a very distinct color and patina on his pieces. And uh, if you look carefully, you can see the little the little swirls. Yes. He's, he's, he's 
painted on there with the with the uh, uh, glaze. Hmm. And uh, you know, almost looks like magical. it has a little line incised into it too, does it? There's a little bit of a line, mm -hmm. but basically it's just a, just a, a form. It isn't you, something that you use to pass nuts at, you know, but uh, it's a, you know, it's, I guess that's an interesting piece. What I love about it is the weightiness of it. It reminds me of something carved from stone in like prehistoric times. Yeah, yeah, almost it's like stone. And that's just an interesting done, a big, big, pot done by a local uh, 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 potter, Massachusetts potter. Mm -hmm. It's a big piece. Is that and red in relief? <laughs> no, that it's, raised? Just, it's just smooth, 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 but she's just created that sort of almost moving kind of glaze up, uh, on, on, a, on the surface. And you, you look at it in different lights, it's, it changes. Not only do the shapes move on the surface yeah. as if they're flying through the sky or something, but to me there's a big feeling of space in the glaze. It almost oh, yeah, feels like yeah. the red is advancing. Of course, warm colors will yeah. advance you, usually. I mean, you look at the depth, if you look straight yes. in the middle of it, you're, go you're going right into the middle of yeah, something looks, else. Looks like red demons yeah. flying in a night sky or something. <laughs> Wow. It's an old, old piece, and the writing is Kufi, and it's a old, old, old script that, uh, you know, most Iranians couldn't, couldn't even read it. You know, you have These to days, be yeah. you know, tra trained to read that script, and the script is, I think, is very, very interesting, and the bird is in the center is almost repeated in the rim. As you, you look at it, you'll see the darn bird sometimes going around the rim. How they've sort of uh, utilized yeah. the script yeah. in the presentation of the bird. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. I've always loved the Kufic script. It's just gorgeous to mm. look at. I wouldn't it's know one letter from another. Script. Beautiful, and that you say the piece is extremely old. Yeah, that's off the top of my head. That's boy, pre BC anyway. Wow, yeah. wow, and there it sits, just enjoying its place on yeah. your counter. How about this funny? And that is not ceramic. Oh, it isn't. No. <laughs> the base is not. The, in, <laughs> no, that's a little wooden base. A that, wooden thing. It sits on. It has great but humor, that's though, with done the thorns. By, you know, I, I think a, a consummate uh, uh, basket maker, a basket. Oh, so it's not a wood form; it's a basket. Yeah, you know, and it's got very, very sharp little prickers sticking out Those are out real. Of it I think those are real. They and look they very are real. real in more ways than you can. You can guess. You know, you pick it up. You have to pick it up very. Very carefully. I can imagine. Yeah. Ooh, I love this piece, the blue one. If I can get to it there. Isn't that That's stunning with those Karen, two handles? Karen Carnes. And it's, oh. uh, she is the sort of doyen of, uh, of American potters. And, uh, she's just has a beautiful, beautiful It's creative stunning. Skills. It's stunning. And the color, yeah. the. And, uh, that just is that an oval? The top is an oval, right? Yeah, the top is an oval. So Basically, our audience, the whole piece is oval shaped. So people have to realize that that cannot be thrown on the wheel. An oh, well, oval I like know, that I is think it? A part of it was thrown on the wheel, and then she, she then she took it off the wheel and, and formed and, and it. Formed it and altered it. Beautiful, yeah. absolutely beautiful. It looks ancient too, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's a big piece. Tell us yeah. a little bit about this one. We want to get, squeeze in a few more before we're out of time. This is done by a guy named Usupov, who, who's, you know, who, who paints on, 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 uh, so, uh, on uh, clay. And uh, the, uh, 
this was a teapot. So it, to believe it or not. And in homage to Leonardo. And, uh, and it so talks about Leonardo and, uh, and a wonderful face. Yeah. And, and look at the abstraction in this. Okay, and this one, I can't help thinking of Moreau every time I look at this one with his uh, big amorph, those and yeah. sort of uh, subconscious shapes and Spanish, lines. Guy named, guy, a Spanish guy named Perez. Beautiful. Yeah, Here we have a whole collection of teapots. Wh whose are these? These are done by T Tom O'Malley, who's the who taught uh, ceramics at the craft center for years and years and years, and and uh, uh, he did some very very sort of wonderful whimsical teapots, of which I'm very proud to have. You know, I wonderful. think we should stop because uh, I want to be able. If we have time, we'll come to back and do a few more. But I wanted to tell the audience about a show that is coming up at the uh, Krikorian Gallery here at the Craft Center. And it's going to be all Barry's collection, not all of your collection, but not the whole show it. will be uh, pieces from his collection. And it's going to be running uh, from April 18th through May 9th. And it's free and open to the public. And uh, the Krikorian Gallery here at the Craft Center is just lovely, and they're at uh, 24 Sagamore Road in Worcester. So I'm hoping that uh, in the month of April you'll come over and take a look at the show. Uh, and a lot of these pieces will be in the show, is that correct? Yes. You've given us insights yes. into the pieces, which are very helpful in looking at them. And I know I have had a wonderful time seeing your work and getting to know you. And uh, I just want to thank you for coming and sharing your time with us. Well, so I'm uh, very, very glad to do it. Oh, it's <laughs> my pleasure completely. Very glad to do it. So um, we'll hope to see you again next time for another edition of Arts and Ideas. Mm -hmm.